I'm Mike Frankton, an analog guy in a digital world. Welcome back to the boardroom. In this video, I'm going to build and install a couple cabinet projects into a van. Hashtag van life. The first project is a three drawer bank that will fit under the bed platform. I get started by breaking down a couple of sheets of plywood to size and joining them with three joinery methods because I'm hardcore, biscuits, glue, and pocket screws. The biscuits and glue create a pretty strong cabinet corner joint. The pocket screws will add some strength, but they will also help clamp the corner joints tight while the glue is drying. So after cutting the biscuit slots and the pocket hole pockets, I add some glue and stick everything together. I put a clamp across the area where I'm driving a screw just to make sure there's no shifting. Once the cabinet is together, I add a one quarter inch back, which is attached with glue and 18 gauge brad nails. With the back attached, it's time to install the drawer slides. When building a project where drawer slides will be used, it's important to install them as accurately as possible. This will make for a drawer that slides easily and also reduces the amount of fussing as the build progresses. I use a Bloom Universal Drilling Template to drill the first three holes. Combined with a spacer referencing the bottom, the holes are drilled parallel to the bottom of the cabinet, a consistent height from the bottom of the cabinet, and a consistent depth from the front edge of the cabinet. The Bloom Template only has so much reach, so I come back and add the back two holes after the drawer slide has been installed. Working my way from the top down, I cut the spacer shorter to install the next lower slide and repeat the same process as before. Pro tip, keep wood chips out of the drawer slides. If this were to get into the bearings, which are coated in some super sticky grease, it'll never slide smoothly again. The next tedious task is to build some drawer boxes I'm using a type of plywood known as Baltic birch. It's about a half inch thick and is sold in five foot by five foot sheets and it makes a great material for drawer boxes. I run a groove in all the parts to accept the bottom, which again is Baltic birch plywood, but this time in quarter inch thickness. I also run a series of one eighth inch grooves in the sides. These will house dividers, which I'll show later in the video. With all the parts cut to size and appropriately grooved, I assemble the drawers. I use glue and trim head screws for the joinery. This makes for a quick and easy drawer box that will withstand the rigors of van life. By the way, appropriately grooved sounds like a pretty good band name. I think it's a good idea to countersink these screws, especially because they're being driven into the end of a piece of half inch thick plywood. It'll help prevent splitting. Let's take a closer look at these trim head screws. They use a number one square drive and the head is only slightly larger than that of a finish nail. I sand the top edges of the drawer boxes with my double taper sanding disc. If you'd like more information about this fantastic tool, check the links below. Here's a closer look at the surface produced by the double taper sanding disc. The first edge is just the factory edge. The second is after using the disc with 80 grit sandpaper. This disc is a great help anytime I have a project with exposed plywood edges. It quickly creates a finish ready edge. Next up is to install the other half of the slide onto the drawer box. I use a marking gauge to cut a center line parallel to the bottom of the drawer box. I follow that up by using an automatic punch to create a dimple to locate the first screw. I'm using 7 16 inch screws to hold these slides in place. I'm very careful not to over tighten them. It's easy to strip out the plywood which would create a weak connection. Time for an extreme close up. 
Here's the automatic punch I use. It's spring-loaded and kind of snaps when it's pressed down. This is a great tool when a screw needs to be accurately placed. Normally these are used to give a drill bit a starting point when drilling metal. The end result is a drawer that slides smoother than Smooth Operator by Sade. Back to the sanding disc to clean up the edges of the drawer fronts. To install the drawer fronts, I went new school. A couple 1 8 inch shims around the edges to give proper spacing, then a couple of 23 gauge pin nails to temporarily hold it in place. Finally, a few screws from the inside. Super fast and super easy. Rather than installing a knob or a drawer pull that could catch on things easily, I thought it would be a better idea to use just a simple cutout to open and close the drawer box. So that's what I'm doing here. Time for another pro tip. Use a knife to score plywood so that it won't chip out when cutting with a jigsaw. I cut close to the line, then sand right up to it. Fast forward a little, I've sprayed one coat of finish on everything. I'm doing a quick scuff sanding between coats. Sometimes this is called denibbing. Here is a trick I like to use to quickly know if I've denibbed the surface. I hold the sandpaper in such a way that one finger rides underneath. This allows me to sand and feel the surface at the same time, so I know exactly when I've sanded enough. I'm spraying polycrylic, which isn't the most durable finish on planet Earth, but it's not bad either. And I think it looks nice on lighter color woods because it doesn't cause them to turn yellow. Oh, and here I'm spraying the drawer dividers. After spraying a few coats of finish on the drawer bank, I set everything aside to dry. I'll come back to it during installation later on in the video. Now I move on to another small cabinet. Uh, this one is designed to hold a water jug and a few other odds and ends, and it'll sit right next to the sink cabinet that's already installed in the van. The main parts are all held together with dados, and I tried to make this opening just right. Not too tight and surely not too loose. To access the spigot, I needed to make a cutout in the shelf and the vertical divider. So I cut and then sanded both cutouts. I really didn't do a ton of measuring for this. I was just kind of winging it. The end result turned out well enough, though. And I can confirm that this cutout fits a cup of noodles perfectly. So yeah, I've done my job. Next was to add two pieces up top, making a small storage trough. A perfect place, in my opinion, to store a whole bunch of cup of noodles. After cutting a few more biscuit slots, it was time to glue it all together. It's always a great time to rock after a successful glue up. Prior to sticking a fork in this one and calling it done, there are two more small details to complete. First was a way to keep the jug from sliding out. I call this a flippy uppy downy stick and it does the job pretty well. Next was a way to keep the jug from sliding too far in and to tilt it forward a little so water runs towards the spigot. That's it for this one, off to the finishing room, and on to the third and final project. I'm calling this a headboard. 
It's a long, narrow cabinet that takes up the space between the bed platform and the rear doors. This would be a nice place to set a book or a bottle of water, and it would also prevent a pillow from falling off the end of the bed. This is a tricky space, and I needed to either notch or curve the cabinet to create clearance for the rear doors to close. I decided to go the curved route because, hey, I'm into curves. I use glue and pocket holes at the two ends. I match the curve of the top and bottom to the sides with my trusty block plane. I mount a rebate cutter into the mighty router table. This rabbit will house the back. Doing it this way felt just wrong enough to be right. Routers leave round corners. I could have rounded the back panels, but I think it's easier to break out a giant chisel and square the corners instead. I add a double thickness center divider, check for square, and pin it in place along with some glue. After that, the back panels are installed with glue and pin nails as well. I have the cabinet clamped to my bench to take out a crazy bow that was in the plywood I was working with. By clamping the cabinet flat to my bench, then gluing and nailing the back in place, the cabinet would be locked into something at least closer to flat than it was. Now it's time to add a mini face frame, I guess we'll call it. I use 1 8 inch plywood because it'll bend nicely to the cabinet's curve. I start with uh, two end pieces, one on either side. I glue and pin those in place. Then I cut and fit top and bottom pieces so they got a nice snug fit. And I also glue and pin those in place as well. Lastly, I cut and fit a center piece. Once everything's dry, I rough cut the excess, then flush the two surfaces with a block plane and follow that up with a bunch of sanding. I pay careful attention to all the corners and make sure they are generously eased and everything is soft to the touch. This time around, I apply the same finish, but with a brush. I did this because the inside cubby space was too small to spray effectively. If it looks like I'm mad here, I'm really not. That's just my game face. Preparing for installation, I needed to make a bracket to mount the drawer bank to some L-Track that was already installed in the side of the van. Here's what I came up with. I made two of these, one for the front and one for the back. This gizmo mounts to the L-Track. This bolt holds the two parts together, and this part mounts to the outside of the cabinet. So I shove the cabinet in place, which is sized to have a friction fit under the bed platform, and I tighten everything down. Once tight, this thing is rock solid. Seems like a good time for a song recommendation. A van like this is designed to go out and explore, and that means possibly getting lost. So for this video, I'd like to recommend the song Allison Road by the Gin Blossoms from the year 1992, because hey, who amongst us hasn't been lost on Allison Road? Let's move on to installing the headboard. I start by leaning a couple of 2x4s against the sides of the van so I have something to rest the cabinet on. As luck would have it, there were a couple of 6mm threaded holes in a convenient spot. I used these as the main mounting points. I also added one more screw on each side to eliminate the possibility of the cabinet rotating.
Time to install this water jug cabinet. This just gets slid into position and a few screws will hold it in place. Please note in this shot, I turn back to check that the camera is recording. Very professional. Here I'm making some locks for the drawers so they won't fly open in an emergency breaking situation. I designed them this way so if they loosen up over time, they would fall into a position where the drawers would remain locked. Hopefully that makes sense. Here's a look at the dividers. They just slide in place. I realize I made way too many. That seemed like a better option than too few. I think I was just on autopilot when I was cutting these. Water jug goes in for the last time. Here are a few finished shots. This is a pretty cool camper van. I hope the owners get some good use out of it. I think the additions we made will help create a more organized space and therefore make this van more enjoyable to live in. Thank you for following along. I hope you enjoyed the ride. Till next time.